Natalie Portman is an actress and filmmaker with dual Israeli and American citizenship. Prolific in film since a teenager, she has starred in blockbusters and also played psychologically troubled women in independent films, for which she has received several accolades, including an Academy Award and two Golden Globe Awards. Portman began her acting career at age 12 by starring as the young protege of a hitman in the action drama film Leon, The Professional. While in high school, she made her Broadway theatre debut in a 1998 production of The Diary of a Young Girl and gained international recognition for starring as Padma Amidala in Star Wars, episode I The Phantom Menace. From 1999 to 2003, Portman attended Harvard University for a bachelor's degree in psychology, while continuing to act in the Star Wars Prequel trilogy and in the public theatre's 2001 revival of Anton Chekhov's play The Seagull. In 2004, Portman was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress and won a Golden Globe Award for playing a mysterious stripper in the romantic drama Closer. Portman's career progressed with her starring roles as Abby Hammond in V for Vendetta, and Bullen in The Other Bullen Girl, and a troubled ballerina in the psychological horror film Black Swan, for which she won the Academy Award for Best Actress. She went on to star in the romantic comedy No Strings Attached and featured as Jane Foster in the Marvel Cinematic Universe superhero films Thor and Thor, The Dark World, which established her among the best paid actresses in the world. She has since portrayed Jacqueline Kennedy in the biopic Jackie, gaining her third Academy Award nomination, and a biologist in the science fiction film Annihilation. Portman's directorial ventures include the short film Eve and the biographical drama A Tale of Love and Darkness. She is vocal about the politics of America and Israel, and is an advocate for animal rights and environmental causes. She is married to dancer and choreographer Benjamin Milaykud, with whom she has two children. Portman was born on June 9, 1981, in Jerusalem to Jewish parents. She was given the Hebrew name Nidali. She is the only child of Shelley, an American homemaker who works as Portman's agent and Avner Herschlag, an Israeli gynecologist. Her maternal grandparents were American Jews and her paternal grandparents were Jewish immigrants to Israel. Portman and her family first lived in Washington, D.C., but relocated to Connecticut in 1988 and then moved to Long Island in 1990. While living in Washington, Portman attended Charles E. Smith Jewish Day School in Rockville, Maryland, she learned to speak Hebrew while living on Long Island and attended a Jewish elementary school, the Solomon Schechter Day School of Nassau County. She studied ballet and modern dance at the American Theatre Dance Workshop, and regularly attended the Austin Center for the Creative and Performing Arts. Describing her early life, Portman has said that she was different from the other kids. I was more ambitious. I knew what I liked and what I wanted, and I worked very hard. I was a very serious kid. Portman has professed an interest in foreign languages since childhood and has studied French, Japanese, German, and Arabic. When Portman was 10 years old, a Revlon agent spotted her at a pizza restaurant and asked her to become a child model. She turned down the offer but used the opportunity to get an acting agent. She auditioned for the 1992 off-Broadway musical Ruthless, about a girl who is prepared to commit murder to get the lead in a school play. Portman and Britney Spears were chosen as the understudies for star Laura Bell Bundy. Six months after Ruthless ended, Portman auditioned for and secured a leading role in Luke Besson's action drama Leon, The Professional. To protect her privacy, she adopted her paternal grandmother's maiden name, Portman, as her stage name. She played Matilda, an orphan child who befriends a middle-aged hitman. Her parents were reluctant to let her do the part due to the explicit sexual and violent nature of the script, but agreed after Besson took out the nudity and killings committed by Portman's character. Portman herself opined that after those scenes were removed, she found nothing objectionable about the content. Even so, her mother was displeased with some of the sexual twists and turns in the finished film, which were not part of the script. Hal Hinson of the Washington Post commended Portman for bringing a genuine sense of tragedy to her part, but Peter Rain of Los Angeles Times believed that she isn't enough of an actress to unfold Matilda's pain and criticize Besson's sexualization of her character. After filming The Professional, Portman went back to school and during the summer break of 1994, she filmed a part in Maria Cohn's short film Developing. 
In it she played a young girl coping with her mother's cancer. She also enrolled at the Stage Door Manor Performing Arts Camp, where she played Anne Shirley in the staging of Anne of Green Gables. Michael Mann offered her the small part of the suicidal stepdaughter of El Pacino's character in the action film Heat for her ability to portray dysfunction without hysteria. Impressed by her performance in The Professional, the director Ted Dem cast her as a precocious teenager who flirts with her much older neighbor in the ensemble comedy drama Beautiful Girls. Janet Maslin of The New York Times wrote, Portman, a budding knockout, is seen stealingly good even in an overly showy role. She subsequently went back to Stage Door Manor to appear in a production of the musical Cabaret. Also in 1996, Portman had brief roles in Woody Allen's musical Everyone Says I Love You and Tim Burton's comic science fiction film Mars Attacks. Portman was cast opposite Leonardo DiCaprio in Baz Luhrmann's Romeo and Juliet, but she dropped out during rehearsals when studio executives found her too young for the role. She was also offered Adrian Lyne's Lolita, based on the novel of the same name, but she turned down the part due to its excessive sexual content. She later bemoaned that her parts in The Professional and Beautiful Girls prompted a series of offers to play a sexualized youngster, adding that it dictated a lot of my choices afterwards cause it scared me. It made me reluctant to do sexy stuff. Portman instead signed on to Stars and Frank in a Broadway adaptation of The Diary of Anne Frank, which was staged at the Music Box Theatre from December 1997 to May 1998. In preparation, she twice visited the Anne Frank house in Amsterdam and interacted with Meet Gies. She found a connection with Frank's story, given her own family's history with the Holocaust. Reviewing the production for Variety, Greg Evans disliked her portrayal, which he thought had little of the charm, but ingenious or even brittle intelligence that the diary itself reveals. Conversely, Ben Brantley found an ineffable grace in her awkwardness. The experience of performing the play was emotionally draining for her, as she attended high school during the day and performed at night, she wrote personal essays in Time and Seventeen magazines about her experience. Portman began filming the part of Padme Amidala in the Star Wars prequel trilogy in 1997, which marked her first big-budget film release. The first film of the series, Episode 1, The Phantom Menace was released in 1999, when she was in her final year of high school. Portman was unfamiliar with the franchise when she was cast, and watched the original Star Wars trilogy before filming began. She also worked closely with the director George Lucas on her character's accent and mannerisms, and watched the films of Lauren Bacall, Audrey Hepburn, and Katherine Hepburn to draw inspiration from their voice and stature. Filming in arduous locations in Algeria proved to be a challenge for Portman, who struggled with the process of making a film involving special effects. She did not attend the film's premiere so she could study for her high school final exams. Critics disliked the film but with earnings of $924 million worldwide it was the second highest grossing film of all time to that point and it established Portman as a global star. Portman graduated from C.O. Seat High School in 1999. Her high school paper, A Simple Method to Demonstrate the Enzymatic Production of Hydrogen from Sugar, co-authored with scientists Ian Hurley and Jonathan Woodward, was entered in the Intel Science Talent Search. Following production on The Phantom Menace, Portman initially turned down the lead role in the coming-of-age film Anywhere but here after learning it would involve a sex scene but director Wayne Lang and actress Susan Sarandon demanded a rewrite of the script. Portman was shown a new draft, and she decided to accept the role. Mary Elizabeth Williams of Salon called Portman's performance astonishing and said that unlike any number of actresses her age, she is neither too maudlin nor too plucky. She received a Golden Globe nomination for Best Supporting Actress. Portman's sole screen appearance in 2000 was in Where the Heart Is, a romantic drama filmed in Texas, in which she played a pregnant teenager. After finishing work on the film, she began attending Harvard University to pursue her bachelor's degree in psychology, and significantly reduced her acting workload over the next few years. At school, she served as Alan Dershowitz's research assistant. In the summer of 2001, she returned to Broadway to perform Chekhov's drama The Seagull, which was directed by Mike Nichols and co-starred Meryl Streep and Philip Seymour Hoffman. Linda Weiner of Newsday wrote that the major surprises come from Portman, whose Nina transforms with astonishing lyricism from the girl with ambition to Chekhov's most difficult symbol of destruction. Also in 2001, Portman was among several celebrities who made cameo appearances in the comedy Zoolander. 
The following year, she reprised her role of Amidala in Star Wars, Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, which she had filmed in Sydney and London during her summer break of 2000. She was excited by the opportunity to play a confident young woman who did not depend on the male lead. When asked about balancing her career in education, she said, I don't care if ruins my career. I'd rather be smart than a movie star. In 2002, she contributed to a study on memory called frontal lobe activation during object permanence, data from near-infrared spectroscopy. Portman graduated from Harvard in 2003 and her sole screen appearance that year was in the brief part of a young mother in the war film Cold Mountain. Portman began 2004 by featuring in the romantic comedy Garden State, written and directed by its star Zach Braff. She was the first actor to sign on to the film after finding a connection with her part of a spirited young girl suffering from epilepsy. Her role in it is considered a prime example of the manic pixie dream girl character type. Portman later commented that she found it upsetting to have contributed to the trope. She followed it by playing a mysterious stripper in Closer, a drama directed by Mike Nichols based on the play of the same name, and co-starring Julia Roberts, Jude Law, and Clive Owen. She agreed to her first sexually explicit adult role, after turning down such projects in the past, saying that it reflected her own maturity as a person. She also performed her first nude scenes for it, but they were cut when she insisted that they were essential to the story. Peter Travers of Rolling Stone labeled it a blazing, breakthrough performance and added that she digs so deep into the bruised core of her character that they seem to wear the same skin. She won the Golden Globe Award for Best Supporting Actress and was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. Closer was also a commercial success, earning over $115 million against its $27 million budget. Star Wars, Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, the final installment of the Star Wars prequel trilogy, was Portman's first film release of 2005. It earned over $848 million to rank as the second highest grossing film of the year. She next played a Jewish American girl in Free Zone, a drama from the Israeli filmmaker Amos Jatai. To prepare, she studied at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem and read memoirs of Yitzhak Rabin, which she said allowed her to explore both the role and her own heritage. Controversy arose when she filmed a kissing scene at the Wailing Wall, where gender segregation is enforced, and she later issued an apology. Critics disliked the film for its heavy-handed approach to the conflicts in the Middle East. Portman's final film role in 2005 was as Evie Hammond in the political thriller V for Vendetta, based on the comics of the same name, about an alternative future where a neo-fascist regime has subjugated the United Kingdom. She was drawn to the provocative nature of the script, and worked with the dialect coach to practice a British accent. She also shaved her hair for the part, which she considered an opportunity to rid herself of vanity. Ruth Stein of San Francisco Chronicle considered it to be Portman's best performance to that point and wrote that she keeps you focused on her words and actions instead of her bald head. She was awarded with the Saturn Award for Best Actress. Portman began 2006 by hosting an episode of the television sketch comedy show Saturday Night Live. One of her sketches, a song named Natalie's Rat, was released later in 2009 on Impredibade, an album by The Lonely Island. In the anthology film Paris, J.E.T.A.M., consisting of 18 short films, she had a role in the segment named Faubourg Saint-Denis from director Tom Taikwe. Later that year, she starred in Milo Forman's Goyas Ghosts, about the painter Francisco Goya. Forman cast her in the film after finding a resemblance between her and Goya's portrait The Milkmaid of Bordeaux. She insisted on using a body double for her nude scenes after discovering on set that she had to perform them when they were not originally in the script. It received predominantly negative reviews, but Roger Ebert was appreciative of Portman for playing her dual role with fearless conviction. Portman began 2007 by replacing Jodie Foster in Wong Kar Wai's romantic drama My Blueberry Nights, which was his first English-language film. For her role as a gambler, she trained with a poker coach. Richard Corliss of Time magazine believed that for once she is not playing a waif or a child princess but a mature, full-bodied woman and commended her vibrancy, grittiness, and ache, all performed with a virtuosa's easy assurance. Her next appearance was in Hotel Chevalier, a short film from Wes Anderson, which served as a prologue to his feature The Darjeeling Limited. In the short, Jason Schwartzman and her play former lovers who reunite in a Paris hotel room. For the first time, Portman performed an extended nude scene, 
She was later disappointed at the undue focus on it and she subsequently swore off further nude appearances. Keen to work in different genres, Portman accepted a role in the children's film M.R. Megorium's Wonder Emporium, in which she played an employee at a magical toy store. She also appeared in Paul McCartney's music video Dance Tonight from his album Memory at Almost Full, directed by Michelle Gondry. Scarlett Johansson and Portman starred as rival sisters Mary and Boyne, respectively, in the period film The Other Boeing Girl. She was excited by the opportunity to work opposite another actress her age, bemoaning that such casting was rare in film. Derek Ellie of Variety was critical of Portman's English accent and wrote that she doesn't quite bring the necessary heft to make her a truly dominant power player. The film had modest box office earnings. She served as a jury member of the 2008 Cannes Film Festival and also launched her own production company, named Handsome Akali Films, after her late dog. Portman's directorial debut, the short film Ian, opened the short film screenings at the 65th Venice International Film Festival. It is about a young woman who goes to her grandmother's romantic date, and Portman drew inspiration for the older character from her own grandmother. A poorly received adaptation of I. Yellett Maldman's novel Love and Other Impossible Pursuits, entitled The Other Women, marked Portman's first film role of 2009. She appeared in a faux perfume commercial called Greed, directed by Roman Polanski, and in the anthology film New York, I Love You. She directed a segment and also starred in a different segment directed by Mira Nair. Portman next took on a role opposite Tobey Maguire and Jake Gyllenhaal in the drama film Brothers, a remake of the 2004 Danish film of the same name. Her role was that of a war widow, for which she interacted with military wives. The film was shot during the 2007 08 Writers Guild of America strike, and Portman found it challenging to shoot certain scenes without a bound script. Claudia Puig of USA Today found her to be subdued and reactive in a part that doesn't call for her to do much else. After producing and co-starring alongside Joseph Gordon-Levitt in the black comedy Hesher, Portman played a young ballerina overwhelmed with the prospect of performing Swan Lake in Darren Aronofsky's psychological horror film Black Swan. She was trained by the professional ballerina Mary Helen Bowers, and in preparation, she trained for five to eight hours daily for six months and lost 20 pounds. Her performance was acclaimed, writing for Empire, Dan Jolin found her to be simultaneously at her most vulnerable and her most predatory, at once frostily brittle and raunchily malleable before peaking at the film's tournament with a raw, alluring show star of a performance. Black Swan emerged as a sleeper hit, earning over $329 million worldwide against a $13 million budget, and earned Portman the Academy Award for Best Actress. Following her win, controversy arose over who performed the bulk of the on-screen dancing in the film. Sarah Lane, one of Portman's dancing doubles in the film, claimed that Portman performed only about 5% of the full-body shots, adding that she was asked by the film's producers not to speak publicly about it during the Oscar season. Aronofsky defended Portman by insisting that she had performed 80% of the on-screen dancing. Portman next served as an executive producer for No Strings Attached, a romantic comedy starring Ashton Kutcher and her as a young couple in a casual sex relationship. She described the experience of making it as a palate cleanser from the intensity of her black swan job. It received unfavorable reviews but was a commercial success. She next agreed to the stoner film Your Highness for the opportunity of playing an athletic and foul-mouthed character, which she believed was rare for actresses. Critics were dismissive of the film's reliance on scatological humor and it proved to be a box office bomb. In her final film release of 2011, Portman took on the part of Jane Foster, a scientist, and love interest of the titular character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe superhero film 4. She liked the idea of Kenneth Branagh directing a big-budget film that emphasized character, she signed on to it before receiving a script, and helped develop her part by reading the biography of scientists such as Rosalind Franklin. Richard Kuypers of Variety commended Portman's sterling work in a thinly written role for adding dimension to the film's romantic subplot. Thor earned $449.3 million worldwide to emerge as the 15th highest grossing film of 2011. In 2012, Portman topped Forbes' listing of the most bankable stars in Hollywood. Her sole screen appearance that year was in Paul McCartney's music video My Valentine, alongside Johnny Depp. The following year, 
she reprised the role of Jane Foster in Thor, The Dark World, which earned over $644 million worldwide to emerge as the 10th highest grossing film of 2013. Forbes featured her in their Celebrity 100 listing of 2014, and estimated her income from the previous year to be $13 million. In 2015, Portman appeared alongside an ensemble cast, including Christian Bale, in Terence Malick's experimental drama film Night of Cups, which marked her first project after giving birth. She shot for it within a week, she did not receive a traditional script or dialogues and improvised most of her scenes with Bale. She said that shooting with Malick influenced her own directorial venture, A Tale of Love and Darkness, which released in the same year. Based on Israeli author Amos Oz's autobiographical novel of the same name which is set in Jerusalem during the last years of mandatory Palestine, the Hebrew language film starred Portman who also produced and co-wrote it. She wanted to adapt the book since she first read it a decade ago, but postponed it until she was old enough to play the leading role of a mother herself. She collaborated closely with Amos, showing him drafts of her script as she adapted the book. A. O. Scott of the New York Times found it to be a conscientious adaptation of a difficult book and was appreciative of Fortman's potential as a filmmaker. She next produced and starred in the Western film Jane Got a Gun about a young mother seeking vengeance. Initially scheduled to be directed by Lynn Ramsey, the production was plagued with numerous difficulties. Ramsey did not turn up on set for the first day of filming and was eventually replaced with Gavin O'Connor. Michael Fassbender, Jude Law, and Bradley Cooper were all cast as the male lead, before Ewan McGregor played the part. Peter Bradshaw of The Guardian reviewed that Portman's stately performance was not enough to save the laborious and solemn western, and it grossed less than $4 million against its $25 million budget. Thank you for watching. Please, subscribe.